the United States Acting Deputy Chief of Mission to Fiji, um, Allison. Ms. Carol Watkins, Chair of the BPO Council of Fiji, representatives of the BPO Council of Fiji, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, Bulovinaka, and a very good afternoon to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I remember, uh, I think it was about three years ago, uh, discussions that actually started for a council to be established for the BPOs in Fiji. Uh, this was something that uh, both government and all of us here actually were all excited about. And uh, this actually makes today more exciting because we can proudly say that we, we made something happen after those discussions. And Fiji now has its very own BPO Council. And you're all uh, should pat yourselves on the back for it. Ladies and gentlemen, your accomplishment extends way beyond uh, you as the council. And this is an accomplishment that benefits thousands of Fijians employed in this uh, growing sector. And as we celebrate the launch of the BPO Council in Fiji, uh, we mark uh, a new era in providing the sector an opportunity to collectively work together with the Fijian government and position ourselves as the BPO hub of the region. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our greatest strengths as a modern economy is the development of call centers and, uh, and outsourcing because it, it uses uh, our greatest resource. And our greatest resource is our people. And to put this really into perspective, close to 5,000 Fijians representative uh, of a young workforce are currently employed in the information and communication technology and BPO sectors and contributes approximately 10% towards Fiji's GDP. We are pleased, uh, we are actually placed, sorry, in a very strong position with excellent IT and telecommunications infrastructure and, and competitive wage and, and safety rates. We also have an educated and accent neutral English speaking workforce, a cost effective near shore location, and a convenient time zone area. These enabling factors, ladies and gentlemen, uh, checks all the key boxes that our neighboring markets, such as Australia and New Zealand, actually require. So essentially, it positions Fiji as a place to tell investors, we can just say to them, Fiji is your destination for doing business and your gateway to other regional markets. Ladies and gentlemen, apart from having a, a, a rich pool of talent, the Fijian government has worked strategically to position Fiji as a lucrative location for BPO operations, offering attractive investment incentives, and as far as our ICT preparedness goes, uh, we have provided digital infrastructure for Fijians and Fijian businesses to do business online. Initiatives such as Digital Fiji and Biz Fiji, which are part of our uh, digital transformation uh, agenda, are actually empowering Fijians to be connected to the Fijian government's services, and it's a step forward from the traditional practice of providing assistance. We've taken proactive steps to remove administrative burdens and reduce bureaucratic obstacles to fast-track approval processes, especially for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Over the recent months, ladies and gentlemen, the Fijian government has implemented pivotal reforms in the area of starting a business. And we've even removed business licensing. We've set ambitious targets, which includes our target of being ranked in the top 50 countries in terms of doing business by 2025, and to be preceded by a midterm target of 75 in the Doing Business Report uh, 2023. Now, partnership, ladies and gentlemen, will actually play a critical role in creating investable opportunities and in meeting our commitment to develop Fiji uh, as, as a services hub for the Pacific. This is why we're working with the private sector on the Special Economic Zone in Navutu in Lotoka, 
and which will primarily focus on creating opportunities in the BPO sector. This SEZ will, will have in place all the necessary supporting infrastructure and utilities to facilitate custom demands of uh, potential investors through its plug and play approach, thus providing seamless business opportunity. And just this afternoon or this morning, I've had a meeting with Manoa and his team at, uh, at Colombo. So you'll have equally a good place that they're in intending on setting up at Colombo. So they've actually got two places, which is Lotoka and Suva. And of course, I'm partial to Lotoka because I come from there. <laughs> Sorry, Manoa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the, the Fijian economy was heavily dependent on the tourism sector, which contributes, as you all know, about 40% towards our GDP. And owing to uh, the coronavirus pandemic and the closing of international borders, this sector is now at a standstill. We have taken extensive sectoral and one-on-one -on -one consultations with uh, industry stakeholders to draw the parameters of our recovery. And we, our recovery is actually guided by four pillars, or to, by key pillars, not four, but key pillars of socioeconomic sustenance. And one of the ways we intend to achieve this is by diversifying and expanding the manufacturing base and establishing industries of the future, like IT and BPO. Looking at the, the current global trend, whilst the BPO ICT industry has also been impacted, it also has the ability to easily diversify into and work towards reviving our economy. Fiji is actually well placed in terms of our resources and facilities readily available for businesses to start operations. And we are well positioned to attract BPO investments starting from the lower end and moving up the value chain. This is evident as we have managed to secure our position by attracting renowned BPO investors to reposition their back office processing in Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to, uh, to achieve the status of the true hub of the Pacific, we need to focus on our potential and we must capitalize on the opportunities available. My ministry has been working closely, very closely with the BPO Council since 2018, when it was in the early stages of formation. And in 2019-2020 financial year, a uh, national budget a grant of $50,000 was given to the BPO Council. Since then, the Ministry, Investment Fiji and the BPO Council have actually been working closely on the establishment of the Council. And today, our efforts are doubling and in fact we are currently working with tertiary institutions in Fiji to get BPO related courses introduced into their curriculum. We want to ensure that Fijians have the right skills to be readily employed. Fiji is privileged. We are privileged to have a 98% literacy rate, which puts us in a favorable position in comparison to other competing countries which provide BPO services. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fijian government, as announced in the 2020-2021 national budget, is committed to steering Fiji towards economic recovery through incentives, such as eliminating business licensing and introducing tax cuts and targeted at businesses and households across the board, reductions in customs tariffs, and streamlining of processes. All of which, ladies and gentlemen, improve the ease of doing business in Fiji making us one of the most competitive destinations for business. Coming back to today's event, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually time to show our appreciation and support for the Fijian BPO industry. I actually strongly encourage the other BPO companies to join the Council and make use of this platform to support the advancement of your industry. Hint, hint, Digicel. In our effort to connect the Fijian BPO service providers to international markets, I'd like to congratulate, congratulate the BPO Council <clears throat> for their combined determination in showcasing Fiji as a highly attractive investment destination for outsourcing. I also encourage other BPO companies to take advantage 
of the investment incentives in Fiji uh, and that we have to offer and businesses to consider outsourcing their back, back office operations to these companies. I accord my special thanks to the members of the BPO Council of Fiji for their partnership, support and their valiant effort in having confidence in this industry and creating a secure foundation for new and upcoming BPOs. Also, we wish to uh, make a heartfelt thank you to the Australian Government and to the Market Development Facility for their support towards the BPO industry and we look forward to working closely with you in realising the full potential of the industry and taking it forward. My sincere appreciation also to ANZ Pacific Operations, Vodafone Fiji Limited, uh, Recoveries Corporation, Centercom, Lindhurst, PAC Leader Pacific, Grey Mouse, BTR and DHL for leading by example and being pioneers of the BPO Council. Ladies and gentlemen, with those few words, it's my pleasure to officially launch the BPO Council of Fiji. Thank you very much. Finally, it gives me great pleasure to invite the Honorable Fires Koya, the Minister for Commerce, Trade, Tourism and Transport, to officially launch the BPO Council of Fiji website.